Hey, welcome to Family Chats with Pastor Dean Ross of Family Church NOLA, where we love God passionately and we love people personally. Thank you for joining me today. We've been in this Here Advent series looking at certain topics. We talked about here is the promised king and, the, and Isaiah talking about the coming Messiah and the child that was going to be born. We looked at here is the newborn king, Mary and Joseph, uh, and the roles that they played in the birth and coming of the Messiah. We looked at here is the supernatural king and the paralytic who was healed through, through uh, faith in Jesus. Uh, his friends uh, making a hole in the roof, uh, lowering him down. Jesus healing him both spiritually and physically. We looked at here is the victorious king. Jesus winning the battle on the cross over death, hell, and the grave that only he could win. And today... We're going to be reminded of, and we're going to look ahead to the coming king. So here is the coming king. Jesus was born so that he could die for you and for me. And so that one day uh, he would return again for his church. Jesus told his apostles after his death, burial, and resurrection that he was ascending to the right hand of Father and he was coming again soon. And we see in the last chapter of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, he reminds John through a vision that he is coming again soon. So uh, when we look at John chapter 14, we see uh, what is known in that passage as the farewell discourse. It's when Jesus is preparing his followers for his imminent uh, departure and what they could expect. He's, he's trying to crush fears. He's trying to give them assurance. And he's trying to tell them what he's left them to do. So John chapters 14 through 17, it begins in John 14. And we're going to read the first seven verses, one through seven together. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many rooms. And if it were not so, I would not have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself where I am that you may be also. And you know, and you know where I'm going. And Thomas, doubting Thomas, the same Thomas who had to touch Jesus' wounds in his hands to believe his resurrection. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If you would have known me, you would have known the Father also. And from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Here is the coming king. And I believe in Jesus' famous famous phrase in, in, in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I believe we, we see and we know and we're assured several key facts about the coming king. The coming king is the way. He's the only way. We all, every human heart wants to know which direction to go. What should we do? What is our meaning and our purpose in life? He tells them, he reminds them, don't let your hearts be troubled. They've been encouraged by Jesus. They had dropped their careers. They had dropped everything for Jesus. And now he's telling them he's going to leave. And he tells them, don't let your hearts be troubled, but believe in me. In my father's house, there are many rooms. Now in the Maybe you've heard the old hymn, I've got a mansion just over the hilltop, translated from the King James. And what we see is that this word for rooms, translated in the Latin Vulgate as mansions, is actually, actually it means dwelling place. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. There is access. There is room for you today. Uh, Romans 10, 13 says, everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter where you've been, it doesn't matter where you've done, there's access for you today to surrender everything to Jesus. The coming king is the way. We also see the coming king is the truth. I love what Stuart Weber says in the Holman commentary. He says, Jesus did not give his skeptics much room to maneuver in their opinion of who he was. He was either everything he said he was or he was nothing at all. C.S. Lewis said it this way, in mere Christianity, he is either liar, lunatic, or Lord. He is the truth. He is to be believed. He is Messiah. He says, no one comes to the Father but by me. The coming king 
is the way. The coming king is the truth. And lastly, the coming king is the life. We find eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. What a great gift, right? He gave his only son that whoever would believe in him would not have to perish, but would have everlasting life. And he assures, assures his disciples that he is God. He, he doesn't make, he doesn't beat around the bush. He gets straight to the point. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father but by me. And he tells them, if you would have seen me and you would have followed me, you would have seen and known the Father also. Jesus is all that he says he was. He is the life. He regenerates our dead bones, our dead body. He breathes life into us. And the same resurrection power that conquered the grave through him now lives by the Holy Spirit in each and every one of us. And we are promised eternal life with him. So today, I hope that you follow Jesus. If you haven't followed Jesus, don't let this video end before you've committed the rest of your life to following him. And maybe God's calling you to do something this new season. Maybe God's birthing a vision in you in this new season. No, he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. He's called you to lay it all down. When it comes to following Jesus, anything less than everything is nothing. Here is the coming king. And like, he, like the author Hebrews said, we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. And not to neglect to do good and to share with others for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Hebrews 13, 14 through 16. I pray that this coming year, that's something that we would all do. We would lay down everything for the coming king in light of all that he said he has done and all that he is doing and all that he will do soon. Let's follow him. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you so much for giving us your word. I pray, God, that we would commit our lives to you. I pray that we would submit every season of life to you. Lord, and I pray that in this coming year, this new year, that you would birth a, a, a renewed vision in each and every one of us, that you'd help us to drop our nets, surrender everything, and follow you. And Lord, we know you're coming again soon. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. If you made a decision or you would like to get involved in a church family, email us online at jointhefamily.church. God bless, and I'll see you next time.